Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. We are here in Hungary today, not far from Budapest, where uh, Vladimir Putin met with the Prime Minister of uh, Hungary today. And of course, the topic of discussion was uh, uh, nuclear reactors being built starting this spring, as well as the natural gas contract that is about to, to expire. We keep seeing in news all over all over uh, Eastern Europe, though, everyone was saying that uh, President Putin is certainly showing that it pays to be a friend to Russia. And uh, the former Soviet states are definitely benefiting from his visits. He's been visiting uh, all over the region here. It's quite, quite obvious that uh, what, what, what we see from the outside we're seeing that it's, it appears to be that Russia has an aggression towards reestablishing re the Soviet Empire. But remembering, you have to kind of go back and look at the way things have built up. You have to remember, nations don't necessarily like the idea of change. But the Pope of Rome met with uh, Vladimir Putin back in January of 2014. And after his visit, this is when we begin to see things start changing and turning. Also, we had the, the, uh, the, the situation where Ukraine spiral out of control. Now we're seeing that the, uh, uh, President uh, Putin is visiting the former Soviet blocs. We see the different things happening in the Middle East between Jordan and the, and the different kingdoms rising against each other and the fighting and the clashing that's going on there, how Egypt crumbled to nothing, uh, the United States putting pressure there, causing that collapse of uh, the Egyptian government. But it is obvious that the 10 regions that the, the, that the Catholic Church is trying to build for its new world order is coming to play. And it may bring force to make that happen because the people, even in uh, Hungary today, were out protesting against uh, the visit of President Putin to the, to the region. But yet the government was openly saying that they had a better deal with Russia than they do with the West because the West obviously is just not offering anything. But well, when will the time come that we will actually see the United States and Canada unite together? Of course, we already see the trade zone has opened up to Canada and Mexico as well, which is also part of that 10-region world government. But as I uh, was saying here also, going back to, uh, to Kiev, to the Ukraine, the ceasefire agreement that was set into to place on the 15th has already crumbled apart and the wars are breaking up, are starting all over again. But you have to remember the Ukraine actually goes back under the Soviet Union or that one particular region of the world that the New World Order is expecting it to happen, as well as some of the other countries that he's visiting, including that of Hungary being another one of those countries that will go under there, and obviously Slovakia and the Czech Republic as well will become of that, and even Poland possibly all going back to that one region of the world that maybe perhaps President Putin has been given that part of the world where he will be one of the Ten Kings. That's the only time will tell exactly what will happen there. But to get to update you what's going on in, in, uh, in, uh, in Ukraine, there's an article that just came out on, uh, on the TASS uh, news agency here. It said Ukraine's army is pulling heavy weapons closer to, uh, to Debaltsvo with obvious aim to unblock troops trapped in the Debaltsvo pocket. Edouard Bassarin, a spokesman for the Defense Ministry of the self-proclaimed Dontas People's Republic, said on Tuesday, they're about ready to gear up again because the, the, the Republic there had taken and held uh, back certain troops that got locked up in there saying they wanted their families released. Well, fighting, no doubt, will definitely start up all over again. Now moving on towards Israel. A lot of things happening in Israel. In fact, uh, we know that Mahmoud Abbas... Uh, had really caused a lot of unrest and a lot of uh, very public violence that took place in Israel starting back in October uh, when he just flat out outright called for fighting and rioting by the Palestinians to block Israelis from coming on the Temple Mount. Well, that is once again beginning to heat up. According to Israel National News, said the Palestinian Authority, led by Mahmoud Abbas and his Fatah party, incited a wave of terrorist attacks last year by falsely claiming that Israel was trying to destroy the Alaska Mosque on the Temple Mount. They're just bringing that to, to, to your attention there. But now we have revealed that in the last several days, the PA Mufti Sheikh Mohammed Hussein 
uh, Abbas advisor uh, on religious and Islamic affairs, Mah uh, Mahmoud al-Habbas, as well as PA Minister of Religious Affairs, Sheikh Yassaf Aidas, uh, have all echoed the claim heard last October and November, which elicited a string of high-profile attacks. Uh, Hussein last Thursday claimed that Israel's hopes to build the alleged temple on the ruins of the Blessed al Aska Mosque is a reference to the third temple to be built on the holiest site in Judaism, which the PA has aggressively claimed to be the mu Muslim only, an attempt to erase roughly 3,000 years of Jewish history. Now, I might mention to you, because I've noticed uh, Bob Kranuk has also made this very well known about the building of the, or the temple, the second temple was actually not on the Temple Mount. It's kind of ironic, you might say, though, because Mr. Klein, who was the man that actually produced the first documentary about the possibility that the second temple was built over actually just adjacent, adjacent to Mount Zion, had sent me his documentary before he made it public. He asked me to view it and wanted my opinion on it. I thought it kind of strange because I didn't know Mr. Klein and I thought it was odd that I would be the guy getting this documentary. Very well done documentary and was very compelling to see the documentary itself. When I watched the documentary, I would almost have to say that I would have been compelled to believe that the second temple was actually there where they claimed it was. But then I began to remember some very important facts. One, in fact, come from Gershon Solomon, a very dear friend of mine in Israel, over the Temple Institute. Excuse me, not Temple Institute, but the Temple Mount and Faithful Movement, Land of Israel Movement. And Gershon said emphatically that the Second Temple was actually built right where the Alaska Mosque is. He also claimed a very interesting supernatural event that took place there that was very obviously showing that the Holy of Holies was right over the top of the rock inside the Dome of the Rock there. And of course, with the claims that are being made that the temple was never built there, that that was actually a garrison for the, for the military at that time, why would they leave the entire plateau built of stone and, 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 and like, side, you know, like a whole area just sidewalked in, and then suddenly just leave the mountain poking up out of the middle of it? And of course, we can see the natural ruins where all the blocks of the temple were shoved over to the back side of the wall laying up under there, archaeological evidence clearly identifying that Solomon's temple was built there, not over there where they're claiming. To me, it's a propaganda ploy. Bob Cornuke has joined into that. I know Bob Cornuke as well. I spoke to him quite a bit, quite at length at one time, uh, a couple of years back. We were looking at doing, possibly doing a documentary together with the History Channel. But it's, it's just kind of ironic that he's gotten on this bandwagon as well, because Bob Cornuke also believes that the, that, the, uh, that the Ark of the Covenant is somewhere down in Ethiopia. He did a documentary with the History Channel about that. But it's obvious, I'd have to agree more, along with Ron Wyatt, that the Ark of the Covenant is actually under Golgotha. It'd be more biblically sound, because truly, if the Messiah is going to be the sacrifice of God, his blood would have to drip upon the mercy seat, which would be right there where the Ark of the Covenant lays. And that's what he found was the mercy seat buried under Golgotha with a crack from an earthquake that had a dried substance that had come down through the crack and was on that particular broken open box where the Ark of the Covenant sat. After that was analyzed, it was proven to be a blood substance. And even more interesting, well, you just have to go and look and see. I won't go into that particular issue there. But my point is, I believe that this is certainly, it, is a, it, it may very well be a propaganda ploy in order to get the world to believe something that never happened in order to build the third temple, not on the Temple Mount where it actually was, but to build it on that very site, very close to that of what? Mount Zion but down a little bit down the side of the hill there, where the old city of David actually sets. But it's interesting, though, the city of David, the ruins are actually still there. So how could they really justify that it's set there? They claim that the mountain was tore down and that the mountain was moved over and was placed to fill in all that land there in order to build the, the garrison that was up on top of what is known to be the Temple Mount today. 
But I kind of find it ironic because guess who owns the land of where they're claiming that the temple once stood? You got it. The Catholic Church owns that land. And so therefore, the Catholic Church will gladly give up their particular spot to have a third temple built and claim it to be the third temple of the Jews. This is why we're seeing this rapid growing propaganda that the third temple actually never set on the Temple Mount that we know today. This is another reason why the riots continue to grow. And of course, the Temple Institute has said that the only way you can build a third temple is all the nations, including the Palestinians, would have to agree to its building. Well, they would definitely agree to build it somewhere away from the Temple Mount without a doubt. But is that where it really was? Too many questions lay there that, that bring that, in, bring that into a, to, to a, to a false account, regardless of how good it really looks. So anyway, moving on, uh, they, they continue to say here, meanwhile, uh, Adias two weeks ago said that since January, Israel has conducted over a hundred attacks in incidents and uh, desecration of the Alaska Mosque and Ibrahim Mosque, uh, the cave of Machfila in Hebron. He also said the Alaska Mosque is a grave and direct danger that with every sunrise, this danger grows. The calls echo the previous round of the incitement led by Abbas, who in mid-October called to block Jews from defiling the Temple Mount. All means, uh, all means necessary. A call that was answered by a wave of Arab terror attacks using guns, knives, hatchets, and cars, which murdered 11 Israelis and left country uh, and, and left countless others injured in October and November. And of course, you know, this is just more violence that's only going to stir it up even more. So Al Hadassah appeared on official Palestinian television and used the term Rebat, meaning a religious war on conflict to defend or uh, re reconquer uh, land defiled as Islamic in describing the wave of terror attacks. We kiss every forehead, every hand, and even every foot that carries out Rebat at the Al Aska Mosque and in Jerusalem. We are behind them. The leadership is with them. We are with them in every movement, in every action, in every deed, and we welcome what they are doing at the Blessed al Aska Mosque at al Havasa, said as revealed by PM, uh, PMW, referring to Abbas called to block the Jews from the Temple Mount. al Havasa said a few days ago, President Abbas greeted them, reinforced them, and requested more rebat. From them, uh, this statement may may have uh, angered the Israelis and, and and the occupation that the president is inciting the Palestinians from Jerusalem to rebut. Yes, we are inciting the people in Jerusalem to rebut. Rebut means to protect and hold on your ground. He added, uh, "It's kind of interesting that this is coming right at the time." that we're about to have the elections there. And of course, we know there's been a lot of attempt on the United States as well to intervene in the elections, and, and they certainly want to derail any possibility that Netanyahu might get back into power. Um, and I know that their favorite pick is uh, Ms. Uh, Levini, Zippy Levini and, and her particular group there, because they know that she is more than willing to, to, to divide the country up, split it up, ax it up, whatever she wants to do. She'll push them right back to the pre-1967 borders which obviously is something that's going to happen. And one other, one other very important news in closing here I'd like to share with you, and that is um, Adele B uh, Byton uh, passed away today. She was a four-year-old uh, little girl that was a terror victim who two years ago miraculously survived a rock attack which left her with severe neurological damage, passed away on Tuesday after her condition deteriorated rapidly from a bout of pneumonia. Very sad indeed, but no doubt uh, going from that paralysis uh, condition she was in, she just got to go to be in the presence of, 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 of the Lord God Almighty. So I thank God for that, uh, that she at least goes there. But my, my heart and uh, our, our heartfelt uh, desire goes out to her mother, Adva, and, uh, and her family there for, for this very tragic time that they have had for the last two years, seeing their daughter that was a perfectly healthy little girl from a rock attack. And this is why I've said many times before, these rock attacks that the Arabs do on the Israelis, you think that it's no big deal, like a kid throwing rocks, but as you see here, this little girl at two years old, a rock attack left her paralyzed 
uh, and then robbed her of her life because her body with a neurological condition made it very difficult to fight off the pneumonia and then died of, uh, as a result. In that case there, the person that did this uh, should be charged with murder as well. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and Herav Tov.